Welcome back to Data Driven Recruiting. My name is Sophia Beck, and I'm joined by my co host, Tigran Sloyan. Hey, Sophia. So, Tigran, you posted something very interesting on LinkedIn yesterday, which is going viral. You know, there are over 10,000 views and hundreds of reactions in less than 24 hours. That's crazy. And right. it's the story is already picked up by, you know, two major news outlets, including the Inquirer. So tell us, what is it all about? Yeah. So uh, funny enough, it's about LinkedIn. So basically what happened is uh, almost exactly two weeks ago, LinkedIn launched what it calls LinkedIn assessments, which is amazing. I was so excited to see the LinkedIn assessments go live because it finally validates from the most major player in the recruiting market that like assessments are the future, right? Without assessments, the whole resume based approach to recruiting, the approach where you look at someone's companies they worked at and universities they went to mm -hmm. as a way to decide if you're going to be recruiting them or not is flawed. And the future is to measure ability so that you can base your decision to recruit someone on their skill set and not their pedigree. Right, because that skill set is more indicative of well, whether this person is qualified, exactly. not not just the, what you put on your resume. Right, the rest yeah. is proxies, right? Like all yeah. of those, they've been proxies for a long time and they're still proxies today. And the only reason that we haven't gone over those proxies is there are no proper assessments. Uh, now, what the post said, though, is that unfortunately the way LinkedIn has done it today is not going to work. And as a proof of that, I essentially tried to take a bunch of different LinkedIn assessments on subjects I know nothing about from mm -hmm. QuickBooks to C++ coding to WordPress and passed them all. And if you go to my profile on LinkedIn, you can see dozens of skills, uh, verified skills, verified <laughs> skills that <laughs> I know nothing yeah. about. And again, the goal here was to demonstrate how this is not going to work. And the mm -hmm. primary reason it's not going to work is that in order for assessments to take over, right, to like mm -hmm. for recruiters to start trusting assessments, uh, it needs to go much, much farther than LinkedIn has gone so far. And if you think about why it's so hard for recruiters to trust assessments, I mean, one is, of course, uh, just habit, right? Like mm -hmm. we've gotten into the habit of looking at resume, the using that as a proxy. Right. And an entire you know, some of the tools are just built to be able to look at resume faster. Exactly. So it's the whole, like what we've done so far. Right. Yeah. Okay. So over the years, we've kind of forgotten that pedigree mm -hmm. uh, is a proxy. It's not actually what matters. What matters is the ability. Okay. But because we couldn't measure ability, we just kind of used pedigree as a proxy. So right. a lot of the market has forgotten that it was just a proxy. So we should get over it eventually. Uh, the second piece is that, uh, for example, in technical recruiting, there is a lot of, uh, I would say, tension between engineering and recruiting, because if you think about it, recruiters find candidates and then bring them in, but engineers are the ones who actually do the evaluation. They do the phone interviews, mm -hmm. they do the on sites. Right. And if I'm interviewing somebody on the phone for an entire hour who's completely unqualified, mm -hmm. guess what? I'm going to kind of go back and blame the recruiter who brought that candidate in, yeah, unfortunately. Fine. Why did you pass this candidate to me and exactly. waste my time? Kind yeah. of, yeah. I mean, because uh, you know, generally recruiters are kind of about serving the internal clients, which right. is it can be engineering team or marketing team and so on. But yet, when you when you have to have a like evaluation that it's a very time consuming, like engineers going on an interview with candidates, then there is a lot more at stake. Exactly. Right? So it's yeah. not just like, you know, a lot of comp a lot of people tell me, like, yeah, recruiters just don't take a leap of faith and trust, mm -hmm. like take on candidates whose resumes don't look good. But it, there is a reason for that, right? Like the right. stakes are not low. Mm -hmm. Eventually you do it once or twice or three times, the entire engineering team is going to be not happy with you because you've been passing candidates that are ultimately not qualified. Right. So in order for this to change, you you really need to earn the trust. Like as a recruiter, in order for me to say, hey, I'm looking at a resume that does not look good, doesn't have most of the things that I'm expecting, yeah. but this person has passed certain assessments and I'm going to trust that mm -hmm. over the habit, over the pedigree, yeah. and bring you in front of an engineer to go through a like a technical interview, mm -hmm. uh, and the stakes are high. And in order for me to do that, I really, really need to trust those assessment yeah, results. You need concrete evidence 
that this is indicative of a skill, right. right? With all, you know, data, as well as, you know, knowing that this assessment has not been cheated on, like exactly. it's actual um, results, you know, trusty word results right. of the candidate. And one argument that I've heard against that is like, well, only, let's say, 10% or 5% or 6% of people are going to do that, right? Are going to kind of like find ways to cheat, leak the questions, ask somebody else to complete it for them. Uh, let's say that's true, but it's, it's not true. It's more like 20 to 30% who actually do that. And we see these uh, as we are in the assessment space ourselves. But like, let's say it's true that it's only 8%, mm -hmm. right? 8% of uh, 10 is negligible. But when you're trying to evaluate 8% of like 1,000 candidates, right? Like if you're going beyond resumes, all of a sudden mm -hmm. the pool is very large. So if you're going to just trust assessments, right? Yeah. That means out of 1,000 people, like 80 or 100 people are just not going to be qualified. If you add up the hours that it's going to take to run those interviews, mm -hmm. it goes really, really large. And unfortunately, people remember the bad experiences, right? So like yeah. even if one, two, three, we're just completely bombed the interview, mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing people lose trust in that assessment. Yeah. Uh, and my biggest worry and the reason that I really felt like somebody has to voice the opinion that like, no, this type of assessments are not going to work and you need to know and realize it and change it, is that the market can actually lose trust in assessments as a whole. Yeah. Without understanding why this approach isn't working, like mm -hmm. I can imagine a lot of recruiters actually starting to trust those assessments, the LinkedIn assessments, and then getting burned yeah. and then blaming in, uh, it on assessments as yeah. a whole right. and not actually thinking that like, no, it's just because of the way this was done. Yeah. So because then it's easy to kind of uh, categorize everything as one and then say, I've tried assessment, it didn't work, right? right? Then it's really hard to, you know, take another yeah. You know, to undo the damage, right? Because yeah. once the damage is done, and it's we're already at a fighting an uphill battle here, right? right? And when that uphill battle... The incumbent of a resume that right. we're exactly. trying to break in. Yeah, yeah, so it's already tough to fight the, you know, resumes as, a, as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you add more burns to it, it might not be reversible at yeah. all. So why would it take for me to, me as a recruiter, to trust an assessment? Like, how do I know this assessment is something that I can trust? Right. Uh, there should be almost no margin for error. No 5%, no 6%, no even 1%. Because again, those percentages in large numbers actually play a big role. Yeah. So you have to do everything imaginable to guarantee no cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, and it includes, and, and it's not just cheating, right? It's yeah. also not just cheating. It's also, are you measuring ability properly? Because like there's a few different problems with the way LinkedIn has approached it now. One is it's multiple choice questions, and multiple choice questions can only go so far at actually identifying skills. You can identify those skills even if I don't cheat, I don't ask somebody else to do it. You can by random else. pick the right one. Right. right. But also like yeah. knowing how to do stuff in theory and knowing how to do stuff in practice is very different. As I mentioned in one of those uh, news outlet mm -hmm. interviews, think of riding a bike, think of driving thing yeah like the driving test right, like, like i driving i test. aced my driving test written test right. but i failed my behind the wheel test many exactly. times before i got one so imagine yeah. if they gave yeah. you the license with just your written test and yeah. said like you aced your written test I, you should be able i'm to a good drive. test taker right. right but i'm not a good driver right so yeah that's not a good way to measure really can i actually drive right yeah. because the driving test is an actual simulation of you performing the job the other one is kind of like in theory do you get how yeah. it should be done so right. like sure you could start with an initial some level of multiple choice and like theoretical assessments mm -hmm. but unless you directly measure ability you're not going to be able to give a signal that a recruiter can rely on right. and so this Mm -hmm. And the second part, of course, is just the overall trust in the system, right? Can this mm -hmm. be Googled? Can this be cheated? And as it starts becoming something that these recruiters trust, the level of cheating will only amplify. Because imagine today, like the LinkedIn's assessments is just kind of like a fun thing that some people might explore. Mm -hmm. If ever it was to catch on, right? If ever right. it was like, oh, if I only had like really validated skills by LinkedIn on my profile, I'll get 
great job opportunities. Yeah, people will bet there will be a people market. will start paying money for there will be a black market yeah. for it. Like there will be a huge black market for people who would just basically take assessments for each other yeah. or have like books published on how to cheat LinkedIn's assessments. Right, right. And just to study the question itself, not the actual skill set right, right. to be able to get good score. Right. So you mentioned great point. So in order for us to trust in an assessment, the assessment needs to have a good test integrity. Right. And it also needs to have a test, you know, accuracy of it. So a lot of false positives will not do the job. It needs right. to measure the right thing and it needs to be predictive of the skills and performance you will have as yep. a candidate. And then, um, yeah, and then also just the confidence in the system. Right. Yeah. And we talked on other episodes about how you accomplish that, right? Everything mm-hmm. from having hundreds of variations of your assessments so that the questions can be leaked, mm-hmm. to having some level of proctoring, usually virtual proctoring, mm-hmm. to having something like a flight simulator that you can actually measure ability right. and not just rely on multiple choice questions. So there's like those are the three key factors around like how do you ensure that you're measuring the right things and mm-hmm. how do you ensure integrity. Uh, and we you remove any of those, that whole system crumbles right. and it can burn the market even more as they were just starting to warm up to it. And I think it's same from the candidate's point of view as well, right? If if I earned my score, I can go and like, you know, it's a credible thing, then I can use that information to really show showcase my skills versus if other people are just getting the score without having skills, then, right. you know, I, I will feel cheated right. that my score doesn't it mean much. Meaning. Right. Yeah, it just loses yeah. meaning. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your thoughts and insights on this particular topic. Um, And for more tips and insights on data-driven recruiting, please check out ddr.codesignal.com.